Welcome to the Kawartha Small Business Podcast, where we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small business. I'm Brian Rump from Profit Coach. And I'm Matt Garrity of Matty G Digital. And we are recording from the Thrive Podcast Studio at Thrive Coworking Community at 18 Kent Street West in downtown Lindsay, Ontario. And today, Matt, uh, I'll let you introduce our topic. I'm joking, of course, because uh, as per usual, uh, we're going right into it. Um, and we're going to talk today about opportunities that we see in 2023 for small businesses. So looking forward to the new year and thought we would do um, just some observations in the environment um, in Kawartha Lakes and for small business. And, you know, what are the opportunities that we at least think we see going into the new year? I'm going to start with marketing, unfortunately. I'm so sorry. I tried really hard, but my mind just keeps going to getting found on Google. Uh, we've talked about this personally. We've talked about this on this podcast. Probably the biggest opportunity over the next probably five years or less and as that continues, is getting found on Google. There's more and more people moving here. I think there's upwards of thousands of homes being built in Lindsay right now. Um, it seemed like that one area over by, what is that, 35 and 7, um, just south of the airport, oh, been yeah. being developed for a thousand years. Yeah. And there's houses up now. Yeah, now like they just popped right up. Like there's thousands of homes being built here. Um, yes, you can get referral and word of mouth business still in this town. It's a small town, but it's growing. The demographics are changing so much. You're seeing it. You're hearing it. Um, people are going to be looking for products and services that you sell. And if you're not being found on Google, you're in big trouble and all the stuff that you've been relying on like shop local and please I'm your neighbor buy from me are no longer going to work because it's so convenient to buy things online. It's so convenient to buy things from Amazon. I'm guilty of it, but we I'm guilty of it because I think it's so easy to buy from Amazon yeah. and I go to my phone and I know what's there. Yeah, I go to Amazon now almost instinctively for like not like I don't know, some products because I know if I go to Google, it's really hard to find a lot of those businesses here locally. And that frustrates me as a marketer, but also at the same time, like that's opportunity for people. Um, there's so many people not getting found on Google and there's so many people using it in this area. But that's the biggest opportunity. Yeah, it's really neat because you and you see that every day. You're doing like the searches and see the activity. So I think what happens is people resist it for a couple of reasons. One is they don't realize people are searching for things like them. And even the basics of, okay, if they have heard of you from a friend or they're new to town and someone's like, oh, I love this store. They're like, oh, what's that place called again? And then they go to try to find you. And if you haven't even done the basics, like it's like you don't exist, right? Like I'm never going around Lindsay randomly um, hunting for small businesses and like looking to see what's there. Um, you might go to a certain zone. So things like the downtowns, I think, need to promote themselves you know, constantly be showing what's there so that if I'm new to the area or wanting to explore, I know that, hey, it's worth it to drive to Bob Cage and explore the downtown a little bit. Um, so that's like one thing you have to do. But yeah, if you, if you are selling a service or something that people want regularly, they are going to be, you know, hunting you down, especially if they're new to town, right? People, I was talking to someone recently who was talking about, the, when they first moved to Lindsay, the first two questions they had was, where do people shop and where do people eat huh. here in this town? Um, and they were talking about a specific restaurant that they liked, and it would just sort of took a while to find, mm -hmm. right? But it's like, imagine if that place was, like, easy to find mm -hmm. um, or know about. It. I don't know what people's hesitancy to Google is locally. Um, 
I wonder if they associate it too much with social media and they say, well, I don't use social media. The numbers don't reflect that, but uh, they, they get too pinned down in the idea of their own behavior, which is a terrible way to run your business. Yeah. <laughs> it really is, especially if you want to be found. And I find it fascinating too, because some people like will exist and then they're surprised that people aren't finding them, but they're not even trying to make it easy for people to find with them. And I think, you know, my view on the hesitancy for Google, and I like it because I don't sell the service, I don't do the service. I think people need it at different levels, depending on how active the searching is. I, I think at the basic level, you need to build a foundation of being easy to be found like, mm -hmm. that's just a, a thing and the, i'm the more i learn from you on those and i look for it now i'm like oh almost every business isn't even doing the like top three things that you would tell people to do and then there's some you know putting some investment into sort of building the machine that is going to keep you being found and you can do that on a fairly small basis that people think is maybe expensive or you can like go out to dominate mm -hmm. and even dominating in this market is not that expensive if you compare it to some other things so uh, i think people hesitate because they think they need to do it all themselves mm -hmm. and it's it's technical enough that you can't really do it or they know people who've wasted insane amounts of money trying to overdo it so you know if you're a small business you don't need to spend five grand a month on seo specific google things and i've seen that in some other communities where um you know they'll say oh don't do seo because it costs and, and they they drop a number that's massive and i'm like oh you have just the wrong person uh, and they're not even necessarily doing it right so they don't have like the right, they just don't have the right information to make a decision. Yeah, locally, if you're trying to rank in Lindsay or Kawartha Lakes or the surrounding area, and not to say that it's not difficult, like there's a lot of work and experience and resources that go into it, but it usually depends on industry and location on how much you're going to pay um, or how much work is really involved. I just priced someone locally. Um, I will say a, a very large number every month for getting found on Google with SEO. However, the industry is extremely competitive and it, there's also multiple locations. And from a SEO getting found on Google perspective, you actually have to rank them by location. It's set up that way. So they've got three locations in two very large cities other than Kawartha Lakes. So I'm like, <laughs> not nervous, but it didn't work. It, I sent the price. The person was like, I can't do this. Um, I will also like somewhat say it was a bit strange because the conversation during the sales pitch or whatever you want to call it was, we're doing SEO. We're spending a lot. It's not working. And I'm like, okay, here's my pitch. I think you bought into me. It's actually, yeah, I found out it was more than what they were paying. But the person was like, well, I don't want to pay that. I'm paying less now. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it's not working. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the problem is that the cost is that it's not, not working. So yes. I think you need to know what it is. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, but like I want to try to get at, um, like you can get pretty expensive with SEO for sure. And that's subjective. Uh, in that industry, it made sense though. Like I was... It was a few grand, maybe more. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah. But also like the person told me like they opened up a file and it's like, I forget what it was, 18 grand, 20 something grand. It was all relative. It made sense. Yeah. And that's so, the other, I think, thing that I wanted to link into. Again, we've turned this into a marketing SEO podcast really quickly. Um, but sometimes you just need to know what it costs to get someone to walk through your door. And, you know, I was uh, speaking with a client last week who they did a calculation and they found out that they spend $40 to get a phone call. And for them, you know, the potential they have from there to close on a client 
for what that lifetime value is, that's a good price for them. And uh, some small businesses are like, what? Like I'm yeah. not paying $40 for a phone call. Like, and you realize quickly you're relying on people to imagine that you exist, imagine how like to hunt you down and to get in contact with you. But you have to, at some point, if you run a business, understand that it costs money to get people to come into your store or phone you or whatever it is that you you want and just start like investing in that. Um, you know, if you're downtown, typically, you know, the rent might be a little bit higher. So that's kind of the cost is you're hoping that someone else is creating some traffic and those people are, and you need to have a sign at minimum that's going to bring people in. But Google's just a great way of like getting in front of people who are looking for the types of things that you, you offer. I would argue that $40 for cost per acquisition in almost any case is, is not a lot. And I bet you, People that are like grumbling, like I'm not spending that or that's outrageous. It should be $5. I bet you they just don't have a clue. Yeah. They don't know of like the average lifetime value of their customer. Like even a coffee shop, yeah. if they're spending $40 to get someone through the door, you think that that's outrageous. But if you then serve them a good coffee and there's a good customer experience, how much is that $40 going to yeah. be over a lifetime? Yeah. How much is coffee now? Like three bucks? A latte is six bucks? You yeah. make that back pretty quick. If they come back a couple times every yeah, few months. Yeah, some right? people are going to be there every day, right? So it's understanding those things. And I, I do understand when you start, sometimes you don't have money or you don't have a lot of cash, but you have to put it somewhere and, you know, just make some decisions. But, you know, a lot of people are... People just use Google mm -hmm. all the time. You know, they're looking for stuff. It's a way to at least do the fundamentals to like set yourself up to be easily found. Um, and especially if you're doing other activity, like just recently, I, I think I saw something on Instagram. I was curious about it. But then to like try to find out where they, the location is <laughs> and find the... Uh, like the website is like, was really hard. I'm like, all I want to do is I know it's here somewhere, but like, where is it? And I'm like, I don't want to guess where it is. I just want to be able to go and like buy some stuff from this place. So that's good. I think, you know, for our opportunities, we'll file this one under fundamentals. I yeah. think it's a never ending opportunity to like do the fundamentals right. And uh, maybe I'll come back to this later when you ask my final thought, but the biggest opportunity for next year people should think about is convenience yeah, and being easy and convenient to find yeah. and get a hold of. Yeah. And I think that goes into, uh, you know, some other opportunities are just, again, people changing. Like we are, I think, and I, I've listened to a lot of Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach um, some cool things that he talks about, which I think are true is, you know, the pandemic was kind of a moment we'll be talking about sort of in history books about the change. And one of the neat things there is he thinks it's the end of the influence of World War II on North America specifically, where post-war, a lot of businesses set themselves up like, um, like the army and you know, strategy and corporate hierarchies and just how we do business. And oh. then with generational change and then kind of two years of people being stuck at home, kind of all bets are off. So people are changing behaviors. They are um, not buying into sort of old structures as much. And we've seen that in people changing jobs, mm -hmm. you know, moving for lifestyle uh, we're seeing it, you know, in Lindsay, Corvus, there's all these new, new developments, sort of new homes. People Flexible are just offices. changing, right? So whenever there's changing, there's opportunity because people are looking to establish new habits. They're looking for trendy things. Uh, people genuinely love living here, I think. They mm -hmm. want it to be awesome. You know, I was in Thrive for the uh, cookie exchange pop-up. And like 
people were you know opening the door and bringing in strollers like several times people are out and about walking um i don't think there's like the there used to be i think a feeling of like oh gotta get out of my small town and now there's that feeling of gotta get into my small town and i want it to have just these things and the lifestyle and they want to connect and when that happens there's opportunity yeah well i look at it like from an opportunistic um perspective as someone that moved here four years ago and didn't really know what I was getting myself into. And I love it. I have zero intention of ever leaving. And you talk to so many people that have also done the same and they've come from other areas. And you also hear a lot of people that grew up here left for a small or prolonged period of time. And now they're back here. Yeah. There's a reason for that. There is so much opportunity here. Yeah. So I just think like, opportunity you know specific ones i think we've had these conversations before where we're like we see this type of business or we should open this type of business um, i don't know that i know what those answers are mm. um, but i th i see there's going to be opportunities um, i think we're in a few years of chaos we have inflation we've got some issues structural issues with housing um, i think uh, that has been feeding and keeping a lot of businesses on life support. Mm -hmm. So I'm not shy about that. Like I think a lot of homeowner line of credits were extended and sort of dumped into businesses to sort of keep them alive. If that stuff sort of ends, a lot of people will be closing up their businesses, which gives opportunity to people who want new businesses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we see just that changeover, which happens all the time. Like, look throughout history there's always you know businesses closing and opening so i think there's opportunities to open a business um, i think there's again fundamentals opportunities to really compete like it's kind of an open market and in some cases we have lots of businesses that nobody knows about so if you want to come in and be the one everyone knows there's a good opportunity Biggest opportunity, do I say this every year? Not to go off script a bit, let's open a better burger place. Yeah, I knew, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. That's why At I some didn't point. drop it. Um, I think, again, that is a like a neat um, opportunity of something like specific, I think, people want to have. Apollo Diner from Peterborough needs to open a lo Lindsay location. We'll, we'll tag them in social media. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, <laughs> bag them. You know, bag them to come here. But that's kind of really neat when you think about, like, we're bagging this biz type of business to come here. I think just shows that there is opportunity. Yeah, then there is opportunity coming. Um, there's going to be, with these new homes, there's going to be more, there's going to be big box stores coming. There's a realtor that was talking last week oh, that got really? all the people upset about the big hardware construction store that's coming. Might be a depot of some sort. Oh, yeah. And people are like, well, this is terrible. I'm like, I think it's a good thing. That type of competition and, like, there's more material, there's more supplies for people. It, like, it, it forces businesses to be better. And this is going to be my last little rant as I was listening to you. I was like, we need to be better here. Yeah. Like, there is... We, we need to stop being so inconvenient to people because I do think that's a big issue with, like, I don't know if we're talking too much about Lindsay, but I'm sure it's the other locations, Fenlin, oh yeah, for sure, and Bob Cajun as well, where we, we run our businesses as, like you like to say sometimes, as like hobbies or like this is something we like to do and it's strictly based on our own terms and we need to stop doing that. We need to stop being so lazy as business owners. We need to open at appropriate hours for yeah. people like so it's more convenient for them and then i'm i'm not gonna go off again but like i i didn't know if i was gonna get a chance to complain again about the the shop locals type type of stuff because <laughs> yeah. it drives me crazy and it's driving me crazy again this year where you see it over and over again and it's this time of year also where they're like laying on the guilt trip of go help your neighbor go shop at their business but like no one ever wants to say anything beneficial about the business. How can this business help me? What are the problems that this business is going to solve? No one ever talks about this. It's just strictly like, go shop local, go do this. And like, I'm trying to shop local. I can't find it anywhere. 
I think I'm pretty savvy too about finding stuff. I oh think yeah, I'm, you were like the king of like finding all the stuff and networking and like yeah, it drives me bonkers and like I'm just so frustrated with the shop local stuff. Like shut up about shop local and start talking more about how your business is going to help me. It's funny. So um, yeah, there's lots of sorry, of that. <laughs> and I. Uh, uh, you know, in my thinking and my Canadian studies background, and I'm learning like new ideas. I try to apply them to like Canada and locally. But there's sort of a couple that I've been thinking about lately. Uh, one is Canada Land's been doing a series on um, monopolies, which is fascinating. And there's like something very Canadian about we love monopolies and we don't love competition. Yeah, And that's compared to, you know, in the United States, there's a lot more smaller brands, regional brands, small towns, people just compete more. And here, and I've, you've probably heard it a lot, there's a hesitancy to like compete because yeah. you don't, like, don't want to step on the toes of any of your competitors. And it's like, well, you don't have to like crush them into the ground, but like do the fundamentals and like build a good business, tell people you exist. So we need that level of competing uh the other one i think i told you briefly about this um uh i've been reading a bit and listening about uh adam smith who's sort of like the father of economics mm. and i even though i teach economics haven't read a lot of adam smith but was reminded of some different quotes but they talk about you know the butcher the baker and the brewer it's not through their benevolence that we get supper it's through their <laughs> self-interest mm -hmm. so things like shop local like we shouldn't be relying on benevolence of the uh, of customers right yeah like people yes we're a community and humans are humans they like connection they want to support their neighbors etc cetera, etc cetera. but you have to you know do more than just rely on people feeling sorry for you so they shop local like i i shop local because i like the people they have stuff i like and i want them to exist like it's not because i you know saw something about how i would be a better person if i shopped local yeah you found stuff that you needed or wanted and it was really good yeah like those were all solving problems or providing value so can i keep ranting I've got other stuff that's somewhat in line with this. Yeah, it's got to be. We're talking about opportunity. Opportunity, it's, though. It's supposed to be our um, bright vision of the future episode, <laughs> and we've gone right into full-on rant mode. Um, but I think it's good because sometimes through the rant, we see the frustration is opportunities, right? Okay, I'll spin this. So the other thing, there's two more things I want to go at, but one of which is the we've become like snowflakes in the shop local department because now people are like, well, it is really difficult to support local. And now we've become, instead of like, go pay for something and buy something, we're like too soft with our calls to action. Where it's like, well, just leave me a review. That's a great way to support a business. Oh, yeah. Or like share it or tell your friend about it. Like, no, here's the opportunity for next year is like stop being so soft with your calls to action and sales and tell me why I should buy from you and how I should buy yeah. from you. Don't think that you're saving the world and supporting local by leaving a review. Go buy something from them. Yeah. That's yeah. how you're going to go help. find out what they have. Yeah. Buy something from them. And I think it's, you know, your reviews help a little bit. Talking to people word of mouth still helps absolutely but if you have a great product people are going to do that anyway mm -hmm. so a couple quick examples just over the weekend you know last week um friend of the show twisted indian raps had a five dollar anniversary special uh like i heard about that through other people before i even saw it anywhere but that's because it's awesome so it yeah. wasn't like oh you know mystery shop local support whatever it was like this, this specific person has this deal on and it's awesome and people are going there yeah like go here and do that and that guy hustles though and and hustles like yeah. he's out in the community he's at group events i've met him at networking stuff or not even networking stuff but events he um will 
he helped us out with the holiday open house that we had where I reached out to him and we ordered like some samosa from him. And he's like, Oh, that's like a massive day for me. But he was the one that delivered it. Like yeah. all these samosa 20 minutes before their busiest day of the year. I ate like 10 samosa on a weekend. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm not even tired of them. They're so good. Yeah. Awesome. They just, yeah, I wouldn't do that. And that's the, you know, the, the opportunity there. Yeah. Uh, I got some cookie exchange cookies from mm-hmm. thrive and some pop-ups and there was like, um, mochis. Yeah. It's like, it's like an artist. It's just like amazing Beautiful stuff. stuff. So it's like, you know, your people are going to talk about that anyway, if it's good. So like, I don't need a campaign to tell me to tell my friends about stuff, right? Like, just tell me what to do. Where, where are the, where are more artists? Like, Mm -hmm. I'm always like, I love discovering something new. And then I'm also angry that I didn't know about it before. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, I have customers who are like mad that they didn't know. I existed like that's again fundamentals marketing like make people know just what you have and what they get and they're going to get it if it benefits them they are going to get it Mm -hmm, for sure so and if you're just relying on people kind of feeling bad for you and tossing you a little bit of money here and there like it's not a way to build Mm -hmm. a business so Mm -hmm. um, that's our tough love (laughs) episode on our 2023 opportunity so um great job matt any final thoughts i do a final thought i will try to make this a bit more opportune like um optimistic it's not going to be the other thing that i'll tie it together with like um the opportunity next year is like to be better to do better to do cool things locally here there's more people in this community now than ever and it's continuing to grow and we need more cool stuff going on here um there's that is right for the picking um that means being more convenient that means doing subjective cool stuff the last thing that i wanted to throw out somehow uh, at some point was the thing that's driving me nuts with event marketing recently is people will post if you're not doing anything else today Oh, if you're not doing anything else this weekend, why don't you come do this? Like, have you really not thought of anything else that's more interesting to say? Like, because I'm bored, I should come to your event because you're such a loser that you have nothing else going on. Maybe you should roll off the couch and come to my event. Maybe that will make you better. No, like, yeah, lead with the benefits of why to come. Like, yeah, come because this is awesome and you don't want to miss out. Uh, it's like that, you know, I never, ever l- like the posts where about food, where it's like, don't feel like cooking tonight. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that happens. But like, lead with, would you like to eat something awesome for supper? How about eat this? Like, your option shouldn't be like, oh, you don't feel like microwaving some hot dogs? Like... <laughs> Well, if you don't want to you have that, here's this other thing that's maybe a little bit better. Yeah. Like, yeah, lead with the confidence of like, this is going to be a hundred times better than anything you're going to make tonight. Like, so why not just have that? Yeah. Cool food, cool events, cool stuff going on. I think someone needs to kind of grab the bull by the horns there and do some cool stuff locally. Yeah. So cool shops, people moving mm. here, you know, people changing, you know, but this, the flow of people creates like opportunities for all sorts of stuff. So uh, looking forward to an awesome 2023. And uh, if you want to uh, talk to us a bit more about this, be on the show, check us out at Kawartha Small Business Podcast.ca or just send us an email to set it up at Kawartha Small Business Podcast.ca.